My next movie to review today is one of uh, a classic uh, film directed by the one and only Alfred Hitchcock. Now, I'm a big fan of Hitchcock. I've started watching his movies quite recently, uh, back-to-back films. I still have a long way to go. Uh, obviously, I watched uh, North by Northwest. I've watched um, The Man Who Knew Too Much, and I watched the fantastic uh, 1948 uh, film Rope, which has a lot of, again, uh, psychological uh, aspects to it. I did make a review for Rope, but, but it was in Arabic. Perhaps in the future I might do it again in English and um, dig deep into those psychological aspects of the film. Uh, but today I'll be talking about Spellbound. Spellbound is released in 1945 uh, and it stars uh, Gregory Peck and Ingrid Bergman, two very popular classic uh, actors back in the day. Uh, I've just recently again started watching some of Gregory Peck's films. Uh, I enjoyed uh, Cape Fear, obviously, uh, the original one, not the uh, remake starring Robert De Niro. Uh, it was quite um, uh, gripping and for, an, for a very like classic film, a black and white film. And Spellbound is also uh, filmed in black and white. What intrigued me in the Spellbound is that um, it involves a lot of uh, psychiatry and psychology. So Ingrid Bergman plays uh, the role of a psychiatrist uh, who is working in an institution. And then Gregory Peck is another psychiatrist who just uh, joins them in this institution. He is given the role of the head of the department, I guess. And everyone was surprised. The characters were surprised. How could a, a young man becomes the head of the institution? Uh, what happened next is that uh, Ingrid Bergman's character starts to feel attached to this guy. He's handsome, he's smart, and he's a, a psychiatrist, obviously. And so there's a, a bit of a romantic relationship that happens. So there's an angle of romance there. But then also she starts to discover that he is having these abnormal behaviors. He's sort of a little bit of um, weird. He becomes anxious suddenly. And it turns out that he is actually not a psychiatrist, that he is actually someone who, is, who, who used to be a patient of the psychiatrist whom he uh, stole his identity. Now, when we say stole, he didn't like steal it uh, purposefully. It was like unconsciously. He did that unconsciously. And that's where psycho psychology comes into place in the film. Uh, it shows that uh, the psychiatrists are, are using psychoanalysis more than anything else. Now, in, psycho, in psychology and psychotherapy, we know there are different types of uh, therapies. We have the cognitive behavioral therapy. We have psychoanalysis. Psychoanalysis is a, is a sort of an older uh, way of therapy in which it involves free association. You know, when these movies and, and TV shows where a person just lies down in this couch and then starts speaking and uh, bringing out all these memories... See, back in the day, they had so many theories for why does mental illness happen. And one of the theories was that many of these individuals have repressed memories of certain traumas, certain stressors. And because they don't un remember these memories, because they are kept in the unconscious, this generates the mental illness. So the way you treat that is that you have to make the person remember, talks about the trauma. And so once he ventilates it out of his system, he becomes better. Of course, uh, this was uh, an old theory. There are so many other theories that came out now because of, uh, for, for causes of mental illness. Some of them behavioral, biological, psychological, environmental, so many. So psychoanalysis for me uh, specifically, I think it's, it's, um, it can work for certain individuals, certain illnesses, but I, think, I don't think we can generalize it. So we're, talking, uh, so we're talking about a period back in the 1945, uh, 1940s. I, I think psychoanalysis at that time was very popular and so that was, that's why it was in, integrated into the movie. So back to the movie, Ingrid Bergman's character starts to suspect that uh, Gregory Peck's character is, an, is someone, is a patient, uh, that he developed some sort of amnesia and he took the identity of the doctor that he was treating him. Now, uh, he then realizes that, yes, I'm not the doctor. 
I can't remember anything. What happened to me? Can you please help me? So there's um, a relationship of love and romance. And at the same time, there's a relationship that, that she wants to help him, that she wants him to regain his memory of what happened. He starts feeling anxious that he might have murdered the doctor that he took his identity. And because he's missing, they can't find him. And so what happens is that there's um, uh, the story turns into a cat and mouse story between Gregory Perk, Ingrid Bergman's characters running away from the police and trying to figure out what happened exactly while the police are trying to catch them and they just, you know, accusing uh, Gregory Peck as a murderer or someone who's a criminal. So it's quite straightforward. Um, uh, again, it's not, a, it's not one of uh, Hitchcock's best but again, Hitchcock never uh, disappoints. I thought it was still intriguing. Uh, I believe the story might feel so familiar because there are so many movies that came out of the, after this film that copied some elements of the film about people who have amnesia, about people who are running away from the authorities to try to clear the name. I mean, one of the most popular movies is The Fugitive, where the person runs away from the, from the authorities to try to clear his name. Although in The Fugitive, he doesn't have, Harrison Ford's character doesn't have amnesia. But it, also the amnesia uh, twist was also seen in many other movies and even TV shows. And so that's why I felt like I've seen this movie before, although it was one of the first movies that came out that gave this idea. I'm sure all those movies that came after uh, uh, was influenced by Spellbound. I give Spellbound uh, uh, a 7.8 out of 10. Uh, Performances-wise, both Gregory Perk and Ingrid Bergman are um, a treat to watch. Uh, the plot is cohesive and intriguing. Uh, there is, as I mentioned, a little bit of romance. There's a little bit of um, uh, mystery. Uh, I think it's quite enjoyable. It's a classic that needs to be watched. And again, there is this psychology element that I always enjoy in movies. Uh, so uh, if you have a chance, go ahead and watch Spellbound.